Anti-landmine activists said Friday a U.S. offer to give Ukraine anti-personnel mines to help battle Russia's invasion violated a landmark global anti-landmine treaty and are urging Kyiv to reject the U.S. proposal. VOA's Jeff Custer has more. Ukraine is one of 164 signatories to the Anti-Personnel Mine Ban Convention, which prohibits the use, stockpiling, production, and transfer of landmines. The U.S. is not a signatory to the ban and said last week it would transfer landmines to Ukraine. International Campaign to Ban Landmines Director Tamar Gabelnik told a meeting of signatories in Cambodia the U.S. offer has thrown the treaty into crisis. It goes without saying that if Ukraine were to accept these mines and use them, it would raise by far the most serious compliance challenge that the treaty has ever faced. We therefore hope and expect Ukraine will respect its legal obligations and reject this deadly gift. Ukraine President Vladimir Zelensky has called the mines very important to halting Russian attacks. Jeff Guster, VOA News. Two children and a woman have been crushed to death as a crowd of Palestinians pushed to get bread at a bakery in the Gaza Strip amid a worsening food crisis in the war-ravaged territory. The casualties were taken to the Al-Aqsa Martyrs Hospital in Deir al-Bala in central Gaza. A doctor confirmed they died from suffocation due to crowding at the Albana Bakery. During the past two months, the flow of food allowed into Gaza by Israel has fallen to nearly its lowest level of the almost 14-month-old war, according to Israeli official figures. UN and aid officials say hunger and desperation are growing among Gaza's population. Palestinians across the Gaza Strip are heavily relying on bakeries and charitable kitchens. This is VOA News. The death toll from a landslide triggered by heavy rain in eastern Uganda has climbed to 17, a government spokesperson said on Friday, with more than 100 others missing. Reuters correspondent Jillian Kitchener reports. A spokesman for the office of the prime minister said it had warned people living in risk-prone areas about possible landslides at the onset of seasonal rains. The East African nation has been hit by unusually heavy rainfall since October that has caused widespread flooding and landslides in some areas. The area where this landslide occurred is mountainous and has experienced similar disasters in the past, including an avalanche in 2010 that killed at least 80 people. That was Reuters correspondent Jillian Kitchener. Namibia's elections agency has extended voting by several days due to technical issues and ballot paper shortages. One of the Southern Africa country's biggest opposition parties said the extension to the vote, which should have ended Wednesday, is unlawful. Polls will now close on Saturday night, according to the Electoral Commission of Namibia. Natumbo Nandiandatwa, the 72-year-old vice president and ruling Swapo Party presidential candidate, would become Namibia's first female president if she wins. But she faces stern opposition from a youthful population seemingly frustrated by a lack of opportunities in the mineral-rich country. British lawmakers give initial approval to a bill to allow terminally ill adults to end their lives. AP correspondent Karen Shamis reports. The decision followed an impassioned debate that saw personal stories of loss and suffering shared. Members of Parliament approved the assisting dying bill by a vote of 330 to 275. Labour MP Kim Leadbeater opened the debate and said that the bill is meant to empower the terminally ill not to take control away from them. We are not talking about a choice between life or death. We are talking about giving dying people a choice of how to die. The vote signals lawmakers' approval in principle for the bill, which is now sent on to further scrutiny in Parliament before it faces a final vote by lawmakers. The proposed bill would allow adults over the age of 18 who are expected to have fewer than six months to live to request and be provided with help to end their life, subject to safeguards and protections. Karen Shamas, London. The U.S. Supreme Court is set to hear arguments on the constitutionality of the U.S. state of Tennessee's ban on gender-affirming care for transgender minors. The case being heard Wednesday will have a national impact because at least 25 other states have adopted similar laws in recent years. The fight over whether transgender adolescents can access puberty blockers and hormonal treatments is part of a broader effort to regulate the lives of transgender people, including which sports competitions they can join and which bathrooms they can use.
Thank you for watching. Can you do me a favor? Please leave a comment in the comment section below. That would really help. Thank you and see you again soon.